Lights. The Mach Wheel Mesa Light is a streamlined, lightweight city commuter style e-bike. It features a classic design with modern e-bike components. And best of all, you can get it for under a thousand dollars. Let's check out the features and components of this bike and then take it out on the road for a test ride. Oh boy, this is, uh, this is pretty slow. Pedal, 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 pedal. Ooh, I'm out of breath. Let's jump right in. And at the top we have some nice soft feeling faux leather grips and these are locking grips. Zoom mechanical disc brake levers, thumb throttle and controls. And for the controls, you've got your power up, down, your light switch, and then down here is the horn button. Very minimalist and simple looking display. And here is the seven speed Shimano trigger shifter. Originally, this bike did come with a fixed style handlebar stem, but Mach Wheel also provided this adjustable version, which I do really like because I like a more upright riding position. So I lifted this up a little bit made the handlebars go up higher. And now, in my opinion, the riding position is more comfortable, but it is nice to have options. So you have this style if you want, something a little bit more rigid, non-adjustable, or this one right here. And this bike does have swept back handlebars, which are kind of cool. I know it will add more comfort to the riding experience. It'll overall make the bike more ergonomic when you're just cruising around through the city. Basic light in the front with the reflector, decently bright. Pretty nice looking cable management all around the front. And you also get a couple holes in the front, good for mounting a front storage rack or other accessories. Wide squishy seat, we'll see how comfortable this is on the road. This bike also comes with a rear rack for storage. The rear rack doesn't have a light, but it does have this reflector. And that's actually okay because the frame of this bike has integrated lights in the back, which do work as a brake light. So when you press the brake lever, these do light up. And we also get a 36 volt, 14.7 amp hour integrated battery. There's that class two sticker and it even shows the wattage of the bike. What's interesting is that even though this bike is advertised to have a 14.7 amp hour battery, on the battery itself, it says 13.9 amp hours, which even though isn't a big difference, it's worth pointing out. The charger on this bike is a two amp charger, which is probably okay for this smaller sized battery. There's that class two sticker and it even shows the wattage of the bike. Zoom branded mechanical disc brakes with the 180 millimeter rotor in the back. And of course we get the same thing in the front, which is probably okay for a bike of this weight, especially since they do give you 180 millimeter rotors. Although it's always nice to see hydraulic disc brakes on e-bikes. This bike also comes with plastic fenders in the front and in the rear. And in my opinion, I think plastic fenders are better than metal because plastic fenders don't rattle and make a bunch of noise. And there's that 350 watt motor in the back. There's that Shimano seven speed transmission and the Shimano Turney derailleur. Unfortunately, you don't get a derailleur guard to protect this derailleur if your bike happens to fall down. And you also get a nicely styled, moderately sized front chain ring, which I think is a perfect size for a bike like this. You're not gonna be going fast on this bike anyways, so you're not gonna really want a giant chain ring in the front. The wheels on this bike are 26 inch wheels, and you do get Chow Yang Hippo Skin tires, which feature a tire tread pattern that is optimized for road usage. So this isn't really gonna be an off-road bike. This is a smoother tire tread, perfect for staying quiet on those rail trails or walking paths. Smoother tires is also gonna help with less rolling resistance, which means your bike will be more efficient. And if we look at Mach Wheels website, currently the price for the Mesa Lite is $899 and it does come in the color green, blue, and this brown bronze color is out of stock. However, for their 2.0 Mesa Lite, it is in stock. You've got this kind of brown bronze color, the green and the baby blue color right over here. And it looks to be the same price, 899, 899. Looks like the capacity of this bike is 350 pounds. And here's that advertised 14.7 amp hour battery. Although on the battery itself, it does show 13.9 amp hours. 
Looks like it does use LG cells. And let's go ahead and take a look at the geometry of this bike. It looks like this bike is made for riders between 5'5 and 6'1. Guys, feel free to pause at this point in the video so you can get a better look at these numbers. And by the way, guys, this bike does come in a step-through version with the colors yellow, white, and of course this green color as well. And I'll go ahead and scroll down to the geometry of the step-through version in case you guys are interested in taking a look at this. The step-through version also does come in a normal size and a large size. That's very interesting, so you get two frame sizes. And their 2.0 version of the Mesa Light step-through also comes in the same colors, white, green, and yellow. And we'll go ahead and scroll down to the geometry of this particular bike in case you guys want to take a look. And this one also comes in the normal and large size. So it seems like the 2.0 version, the only major difference is the front suspension fork. Everything else seems to be the same. Now that we've gone over the specs of this bike, let's take it out for a ride and see how it performs. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. It is another cool, crisp day out here in Connecticut. And I have actually waited two weeks, maybe even more than two weeks, for a good day to do some review rides because it's just been snowing or raining or extremely cold and none of those situations are good for review rides. And today we're on the Mach Wheel Mesa Light. This is a city commuter bike. It's on the weaker side, 350 watts, 36 volts. And we're going to take it up our moderately steep long incline which i think is a good real world test on something that you might run into in the real world not something crazy steep but it's not always flat and we're gonna go up this hill throttle only here we go without further ado three two one go very very slow start it's tough to stay upright all right I find a lot of these city commuter bikes, they usually come with weaker motors and smaller batteries and lower voltage. I don't know why. Let me know in the comments below if you guys know why. If you guys like videos like this, if I've earned your subscription, feel free to subscribe. Hit the notification bell so you guys don't miss any future videos. Like the video if you like it. And if you don't like it, tell me in the comments. Tell me why you're mad. Tell me what problem you have with the video. Tell me your life problems. Oh boy, this is uh, this is pretty slow. What are you gonna do? 36 volts. Allegedly, this bike peaks at 350 watts. And time. There it is, guys. So, <laughs> because we went up that hill at the speed that you just witnessed, we're not even going to try and do the steep hill climb. Not even going to do it. Not worth it. I already know it's not going to make it. So, what we're going to do today is just cruise around and see how this bike performs. Start with a little bit of sidewalk riding. By the way, this bike has no suspension no front suspension no rear suspension there is a version 2 of this bike that they are releasing that does have a front suspension oh my god but this one has nothing the advantages of having no suspension is a very lightweight bike and this bike is very lightweight i can easily pick it up if you guys need to walk this bike up a set of stairs pick it up and just carry it you know put it on your bike rack carry it anywhere you can easily do that with this bike so that is one advantage of having no suspension as far as top speed goes of this bike we're not even going to test that either i want to say it's somewhere on 25 miles an hour maybe a little more maybe a little bit less the reason we're not going to test it is because you don't even buy bikes like this for top speed People that buy bikes like this are interested in cost and how lightweight the bike is. They're not interested in going crazy fast. And we will try and do a bit of a range test today. I'll get in maybe about 10 miles of riding on this bike. This is my first time out on this bike. And just for your reference, I am 200 pounds and the temperature outside is, I want to say, somewhere between 38 and 40 degrees Fahrenheit. 
Yeah, crossing this road, very, very, very minimal power for acceleration. What are you gonna do? This bike is definitely a bike that you have to pedal. Let's see what my top speed is pedaling hard. This is a slight downhill. Pedal, 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 pedal. Pedaling hard. Yeah, so maybe you can get to 28 miles an hour on this thing. The brakes on this bike are mechanical. I always like to see hydraulic brakes, but for a lightweight bike, mechanical is okay. They just take a little bit more maintenance than hydraulic brakes because, oh, I'm out of breath. Because as mechanical brakes wear out, it's up to you to adjust them to make sure they work properly versus hydraulic brakes. They self-adjust. So all you have to do is replace the pads. You don't have to, oh, hey doggy. You don't have to turn any kind of Allen bolt like you do with mechanical brakes. Hey doggy, pedaling this thing up a hill is a decently low gear. Pedaling isn't too bad. You guys see my legs right now. Here's the cadence at 10 miles an hour. I am very happy that Mach Wheel did give me a riser stem that's adjustable. I really like the upright riding position. I think it's more comfortable. And so far, the seat is pretty comfortable. It is on the wider side, fairly squishy. So far, so good. Sometimes you get in a seat and you already know that in half an hour, it's gonna be uncomfortable. But this one seems to be fine. If you get on a bike seat and you don't think anything, it's probably gonna be okay. If you get on a bike seat and you're like, oh, I feel this, right now it's okay, but you already know, half an hour in, it's gonna be not so great. This bike does come with a trigger shifter and for this particular bike, I think that's great because the throttle is on the left-hand side. Some bikes, they have a twist throttle on the right-hand side and a trigger shifter and the shifter gets in the way of the throttle. So thankfully in this case, the throttle is on the left side, trigger shifters on the right, and they don't compete for real estate on the bar. And the shifting feels fantastic. Let's do a downhill braking test at 20 miles an hour. Here we go. Yeah, see that? Downhill going 20, works great. The power that this bike gives you is very, very, very limited. 350 watts. If you're someone who will absolutely always pedal their bike, this might be okay. But if you're interested in just using throttle, you better live somewhere flat like Florida or somewhere else because this will not do hills as you guys saw earlier. Let's do this hill right here. So we're cruising at 15, throttle, Pedal assist level five. It's actually doing okay. It is slowing down. And this is not a steep hill at all. Very, very small hill. All right, so I guess you either will crawl and throttle only up a hill or you pedal. It's up to you guys. Everyone has their own preference of what kind of bike they want. And I see it like this. It's just another tool for a particular job. If you want something lightweight, this is a great bike for you. If you want something fast with a lot of range, you won't get a lightweight bike because that's going to require a big battery, a big motor, a big controller, much stronger brakes, a much stronger frame. So you can't get both yet. Maybe in the future they'll change that with improved technology. But if you prioritize something lightweight, this is a fantastic option. And this bike is under $1,000. So the price is right, guys. I do love the minimalist, small looking display. It looks clean. I like the design, black background, fantastic. Nice and clean. For a bike like this, I really don't care about seeing wattage. Although I do always wanna see voltage of a particular bike, just because that'll, give you a more accurate representation of what level your battery is on versus some battery bars. So here's throttle only. Top speed, yeah, we're 
topping out at 20 miles an hour. And I want to say this is a class two bike. Class two throttle tops out at 20 and then you can pedal and you'll get to 28. Lots of doggies out. I don't know if they're happy to see me or they're trying to bark at me to run away. I like to think they're happy to see me. I love dogs. I know not all dogs love me back. I wish they did, but I love dogs. They're the best. It does have that beach cruiser handlebar feel where the handlebars are swept back. Fantastic ergonomics from that standpoint. And when you pair that up with that riser stem, it really does make for a comfortable ride. Let's go up this hill again. The gearing is great for this bike. Not too low, not too high. It is just right for the power that this bike gives you. So here it is. 10 miles an hour will give you a decently low enough gear going up a hill. The horn sounds like uh, kind of like a buzzing noise. Some bikes sound like a beep. This one's more of a buzz. Light button right up here. All the controls are very easily accessible. Yeah, see going up this hill, a little bit of a struggle. You got to put some leg power into it. Thankfully, there are no rattles on this bike because of the plastic fenders. I am a fan of plastic fenders. Team plastic fenders. They look fine, they perform fine, and they're quiet and they're lightweight. Metal fenders are, in my opinion, one of those things that is good on paper because you think, oh, metal, more durable, higher quality than plastic. But man, they just rattle around everywhere and these are nice and quiet. The tires on this bike do have more of a road style tread on them. You're not gonna wanna off-road on this bike, especially because it has no suspension. And because of that, they are on the quieter side. And the motor is also quiet. It's a lower powered motor. And so riding around on this bike, you'll fit right into a pedestrian walkway or a rail trail. You will not get any kind of sketchy looks. People thinking you're riding something that can go as fast as a motorcycle or has some kind of insane power. This looks like a regular old bicycle. So if you are worried about that, this is a great bike for you. I think this bike is slightly too powerful for the United Kingdom because uh, I believe they limit their bikes to 250 watts, 20 miles an hour. I'm, I don't know if that's 20 miles an hour with pedal assist or without, but regardless, I think this is slightly too powerful. I have ridden 250 watt bikes before, and if they are in a mid-drive configuration, it's actually not too bad. Just don't expect to go fast up a hill. You're gonna get up the hill just fine, but it's gonna be slow because you're limited to the gearing and the motor power, of course. But because of the gearing, if you gear down low enough, you'll get up that hill. It'll just be a crawl. We're gonna head out of this neighborhood and go to a different neighborhood just to get a change of scenery. I just realized I don't even have my heated gloves on. Oh my God, save your heated gloves, ladies and gentlemen. Excellent product, would highly recommend it. Come to a complete stop. Oh yeah, look at that, following the law. I know some of my commenters are gonna be very happy to see that. I'm just trying to make your day, guys. I know you wanna see the rules followed and I'm gonna make you happy. Look at this, look at this, look at this right before the line oh yeah looking both ways let's look again all right let's continue on i got you guys see i want to make all the commenters happy the speed demons and the slow pokes and the guys that want to follow all the rules i love all you guys thank you for your comments yeah see right here slight incline and i have to cross the street you will have to pedal guys See, I'm hitting the throttle, pretty much no power. I got a pedal. Might as well have been on a regular bicycle at that point. I generally try and stay away from the busy roads. Just to be on the safe side, I see no need to be on the side of a busy road if I don't have to be. So for this next area, we are going to encounter some hills and one of them is pretty big and I'm gonna try my best to pedal up this hill because I'm sure you guys are curious what the spike is like in case you have some hills in your area. And through my suffering, you can learn if this will be a good bike to get or not. Lowest gear, this is pedal assist five. I'm pedaling guys, I am pushing. I hear that motor struggling. Yeah, it's being pretty loud back there. We're moving guys. Throttle isn't helping me at all. It's giving me full power. 
nine miles an hour. I'm pushing decently hard into these pedals. Come on, baby. 36 volts, 350 watts. Let's go. Oh, boy. It's steeper now. We're struggling. I'm doing my best to not get up from the seat. Oh, my God. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. You got this. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Eight miles an hour. I'm pushing, but I'm not pushing really hard. I don't have my whole body off the seat. Come on, come on, come on. Whew. All right. See, who says you can't get exercise on an e-bike? Working my ass off here. All right, we're leveling off. Let's try and pedal hard and fast. Yeah, I'm pedaling really hard right now. We're topping out at about 25. So we'll say that's the top speed with pedaling. And we're gonna go down the same hill. This is a good opportunity to bed these brake pads because I have not done that yet. So we'll just get them nice and hot and get the brakes bedded. The brakes are actually on the quiet side. They're decently quiet for mechanical brakes. You can always make them quieter if you switch out the brake pads to a softer compound, like an organic brake pad. Some of the ceramic or metal ones are on the louder side, but these work fine. I'm very happy with these brakes. No complaints. So what I'm gonna do now is ride around, get a little bit more range on this bike, see how it feels. I'll let you guys know what my range is and what the battery percentage is at the end. What we're going to do is take the battery out, let it rest for about half an hour, and then throw a multimeter on it, throw a voltmeter on it, see what the voltage is. And that'll give us an idea of what the battery percentage is like after this style of riding. Because I'm just keeping it on pedal assist 5 the whole time because this is a weaker bike. My multimeter wasn't picking up any voltage from the battery terminals, possibly because some batteries have an internal switch that shuts them off when they aren't in the actual bike. But as you can see here, the battery is showing 3 out of 5 bars after a 10 mile ride. So my guess is that if you ride like I did in this video, using pedal assist 5 the whole time and demanding all the power from the motor while also pedaling, you'll be able to get 25 to 30 miles of range from this bike. I'm gonna go ahead and record some V-roll for this video. Use the selfie stick with the Insta360 X3, link in the description below. Fantastic little setup in case you guys wanna make riding videos, review videos on e-bikes, whatever you guys wanna do. You can use this camera for everything, including mounting it on your helmet like I'm doing right now. So before I do all that, I'm gonna give my final thoughts on this bike from this initial review ride. This bike is exactly what you would expect. It's a lightweight, portable, casual, chill, beach cruiser style handlebarred city commuter bike. It looks like a normal bicycle. It has normal sized tires, not the fat tires. So if you want to blend in with the acoustic bikes and have a small boost with a lower powered electric motor, this would be a great option. If you need a lightweight bike for whatever reason, maybe you have some disability, maybe you're on the weaker side, maybe you do have to lug this bike up and down a bunch of stairs, this is a great option, it's very lightweight. If you don't need the power, great option. If you do need suspension or a lot of power, I would not recommend this bike. But there are other bikes you can get. On flat ground, this bike is fine. Up hills, not so much, would not recommend it. But you can do it if you want to. If you're okay with using this like a regular bicycle with a small 350 watt booster motor, you'll be fine. So right now we're at six miles. We'll go ahead and put on another four miles. I know that's not a full huge range test, but what we'll do is do 10 miles of riding, see what the battery percentage is at. And if it's at a higher percentage, that means this bike has a lot of juice and you're gonna get a lot of range. If we're at a lower percentage, than expected, you're not gonna get all that much range. 
I think this is a 14.7 amp hour battery, which for 36 volts is actually not too bad. Especially because I'm using my legs a lot. It's not just going to be a throttle only type of bike. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you like videos like this, feel free to subscribe to the channel, like the video, and if you don't like it, tell me why. Tell me why you're mad in the comments. Tell me your life problems. Tell me why you're frustrated in life. And I will respond. I respond to virtually all of my comments. Some of them I miss, some of them I honestly don't even know how to respond. Some of them are uh, kind of out there. You guys know what I'm talking about. But I try and get back to all you guys. Thanks for stopping by, guys. Until next time.